<clears throat> I am back. Guys, it was a long time, but now I'm finally back. And I like to talk in that video about the software updates. My experience with it, with 600 miles on it already. Then I like to talk about what is going on with the service and how things are progressing. So let's have a look and let's go. <clears throat> All right, what's the first major improvement? That's really the tiny thing now. Also, I have fully software 2.0, all three patches are installed. And I can't imagine, you go to the car and it's open and there's nothing happened. That's a major improvement. And the rest I'd like to show you in the car directly. So there are a lot of updates now with the software 2.0. Yeah, as you can see, for example, here fully um, installed. Yeah, so it takes a little bit. Let's see if we get a connection or not. Yeah. Okay, page not found. It's interesting. Normally you displays here all the changes. Yeah. So you have, um, you know, like profiles, which you know can um, set up. You have a new energy control function. That's quite interesting because you have standby timing. And then you can say how long the car needs to be in a standby. I switched it to 10 minutes. Then it goes directly into um, um, into a sleeping mode, deep sleep mode. Um, and not use so much battery train. The battery train, by the way, is significant improved. They had like up to 5% and now it's led. And the interesting thing I like to mention here, as you can see, it's called Fahrzeug zu Ladung Laden. Yeah, it means bi-directional charging. So they already set off or set in, you know, like for the next updates that you can charge predominantly your car or not. And that's quite interesting. Then you can shut down, for example, um, your car less than 10%, stuff like that. So this is one of the things, significant improved, and I have to say, you feel the difference, yeah? What I have to say in principle, which is not so significant improved, yeah, is um, that display, yeah? So we see here solar sky. Um, as you can see, we have an actual rate of 63%. Um, it's a little bit hazy today, but still nice weather. But on the lifetime, we got just 88.2 kilometers, which is equal to 70 kilowatt hours. That means we got only round about, um, yeah, I would say 50 miles of range so far. It's not bad, but due to the fact that it's so long already on the car, um, I'm not super excited about. Maybe it's because we're living here in Europe and we don't have so much sun as it would be, for example, in Florida or California. But I'm not 100% convinced how these things are or how much you get out of it. Yeah, I know it's just also it's just applicable from update, I think, 1.11. So it means that it haven't been functional before. Um, I remember, I think, at the beginning when I got my car, it was functional, but then they switched it off. It's not so cool. What I also don't like is you don't get actually what is your usage that's really poor managed and that needs to be adjusted because as you can see here since i installed the update it's thousand kilometers which are equal to 600 miles and um yeah things are not so progressing what i need to say what is really improved is the range you're getting from the car yeah um that's that's very good surely i need to say that we have also much more warmer conditions now and everything is much better here um, but the range is now significant improved so we will get up 400 to 500 um, kilometers per fully charged which is equal about i would say 220 to 280 miles which is definitely not too bad what is also very significant increase is the gps the navigation it all that's so not the gps the navigation yeah so i like tom 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 i think in europe is a very very um good um navigation system so you get also rudder warning um you get construction side warning yeah a lot of warning yeah what are still are the issues with um the the um software update well you get a lot of failures others is not working um, um i had two major issues i need to say passenger seats yeah um once we couldn't open the 
as a not the seat sorry passenger doors yeah so i needed to go out of the car with my key i needed to open it and unlock my girlfriend and once i was breaking yeah um it made like shaking 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 yeah and that wasn't so good really from um how things been working yeah so it was a very strange brake experience yeah even when i didn't brake hard something like the um abs been too quickly rooting in and then you get still you know like all these failure functions of the other system um, there's also one that the hut is constantly open also the charging hut yeah which is quite strange i didn't have that before um, and still the climatic control isn't as it should be um, so these are things which are still not so good from the updates um, what is also cool is the um, auto hold i need to say yeah that's that works very properly from that side um, and I still, as you can see now here also on the side, I, I'm, I'm finally having like, an, um, you know, like um, here the, the, the lane assist functionality and stuff like that, which is pretty good. Beside, I need to say, um, I don't see too many changes. Yeah, um, it should be installed already from the beginning, I need to say, um, but happy that they do an update here what i also need to mention is i had a call with fisker because my car is going to service and maintenance which i'm coming on the second half of the video now to talk about and the cool thing here is um that they told me in summer there will be a 3.0 and it will be not following the guidelines anymore they published and they already had it together installed with magna as it was also developed with magna because in the past i heard that things are be done you know like from um from yeah how can i say uh, it was developed from an indian company or something like that now they, they said it's with magna together they had it on their cars already installed and this should unleash more or less the whole potential whatever this means you know so that's already updates from the software side so the rest is now what is about the service how is the situation like that looks like hey guys there's something i really like to raise up here yeah so you are the greatest community i'm unbelievable um i'm so surprised and i'm so pleased yeah i need to say because i met so many friends here also um for example mike from uh, Fisco Ocean Specialist, the channel I re can really recommend. Yeah, I'm really pleased about that. Yeah, that we are had made a such good friendship. Um, there's another channel I can recommend because I'm also following it. it it's Adams EV. Um, he gives a lot of news about Fisker and stuff like that. So I think this is worth also to have a look onto that. And you are guys the greatest. Yeah. So thanks for your likes and subscribe and all the support. And I was really like surprised that when I went now a little bit like radio silent, um, that you guys been asking me, emailing me. Yeah. What's going on? we like we are interested to see how things are progressing so so thank you so much guys really really appreciate thanks for your like and subscribe and all the support you're giving me thank you all right service yeah as you guys know my fisker has an issue with the air winds um, and that's um, already the second time this issue occurs yeah um, fisker told me that there is an control device in the back which wasn't accurate installed um, or also planned and that's why these tiny things which moving around the air winds yeah are oversteered and then they finally crack and that's why you can't move them so i have the problem that next to my steering wheel so the second from the side that this one is not working right now um, they fired the tech or they didn't enlarge the contract of the tech which was located in my area which is really a pity because Wazel was really a really cool guy and a good guy and then they went a little bit radio silent but I have to say now they came back they offered me now originally that I should go to Frankfurt which is quite far to drive um, which was really a pity I need to say because consistently the car needs to go either to Munich or Frankfurt which is like back and forward about um, yeah, 240 miles a little bit more even yeah um, which was really annoying i need to say um, now i'm really happy that they're going to offer me the solution because what i said like in my area now they have a partnership with somebody else um, this is actually what they originally said that they like have service centers um, they're cooperating with this is um, it's called abs rife and they can maintenance my car and i get also there my um, wheels changed and stuff like that so that's pretty good i have to say from the service character things are 
yeah, I would say, I would not say amazing, but it's really good because they took care, you know, like I didn't put too much pressure on them at the moment. Um, they went silent after all the shock um, news came out. And when I was chatting with them, Luis been asking, you know, like, what is the situation right now? Yeah, what, what, what do you think about the company? Um, is there any news? Yeah, is it not existing in the future and stuff like that? And they said, okay, we should go into the investor release, also on the investor side, also the press release on the on the homepage, on the investor release, and check all the information up there because they also don't know about what what are what things are going forward, how things developing with him, the company and stuff like that. They're in a good faith um, that things will be progressing, also with the involvement of Deutsche Bank now and the other um, guy responsible for selling the company. So it seems to be that there are things moving forward. Um, I get also the impression when I'm looking into the homepage that I'm or into Reddit and the forums that their focus at the moment is in Europe yeah? um, because we get a little bit more service at least what I can feel as a customer yeah? and um, also they made now the price cuts within Europe but not so significant as they did for example within the US so and they have now this partner dealerships or you know like ships going on here service um, hubs where they're going to focusing on so it seems to be that they are a little bit more focusing on the european side yeah um, but it would be equal to understand how this is from my us followers here um, what do you think about yeah um, that would be very interesting so as I said, you know, like we had some issues, service, service, yeah, also um, what I had lately is when I opened the California mode also next to this breaking event and that my girlfriend couldn't go out of the doors anymore, yeah, um, <clears throat> is that um, my doggy windows didn't went down, yeah, so they need readjust and they need to be re um, um, done and, um, but beside I have to say the car runs smooth and everything is fine next to the failures, which I mentioned already, I don't see too much issues at the moment, yeah. Um, how do I feel as an as an car driver yeah, um, with the situation even when I'm getting now this service and they seems to be looking forward to having support at least in Europe well I'm not selling the car um, I need to say because with the price cuts and stuff like that it makes no sense to me anymore to selling that car with such a massive loss because it's not worth so much anymore um, do I think the car would be a good deal right now um, I, I would I can't recommend you know like to buy the car but for me I'm coming from business yeah so so if you like to have um, a bidirectional charging or something like that or you like to use it as a battery I think the battery itself is already cheaper as the whole car yeah um, so if you just stand it into your garden and you like to recharge your house or you're taking out the battery and use it for your home um, it's cheaper than buying one of course you have to recycle the other stuff and things like that but on the other hand side I would say it's not the worst deal yeah um, so I will not sell the car but um, I don't like the the whole situation right now I would be would be really happy if um, they find an investor which I personally not believing in because I don't see you know like why somebody should buy a design and um, there's no assets and stuff like that you know like why should somebody take over that that's my personal opinion you know like I'm not an whatever financial advisor whatever I just show here my opinion my hobby my experience with the car I don't like to say anybody you should buy the car or whatever um, but I don't believe in that but I still have some hope that somebody's taking over or maybe they just maintenance this cause yeah but I have to say that's a really shitty situation yeah because um, we need software updates um, if the car breaks down you know like we need to we need support and stuff like that so me personally I really hope that the show keeps on going as an as an owner yeah so fisco ocean one owner and by the way talking about fisco ocean one something i like to mention as well i've been asked um fisker what about all the benefits which been promised to us in um last year's um, um yeah autumn time um because when they did already the first price cuts they offered this package to the um fisco ocean one owners like a thousand dollar gift card for um charging and stuff like that <clears throat> now honestly speaking they went radio silent um i still hope you know like i get my tires i get the gift card and stuff like that but um there's less hopes and of course when they go bankrupt we don't get anything yeah 
Uh, yeah, guys. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I will post more updates for sure. Promised. Yeah. Thanks again for all your support. I really love you guys. Um, it's beautiful weather. Yeah. My family, and myself, we're going today also out, having a nice trip. So enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the rest of the. Yeah, I would say not the weekend. The rest of the day. Yeah. And um, chat soon. And thanks for everything. Cheers. Bye bye.